In today's video, we're going to try submerging steak in three different substances to see which one breaks it down the most. We have steak again. We have steak again, which is a good day for me <laughs> most of the time. I'm pretty much always excited about that. We have some non-steak stuff with us as well. We do. Most of this is edible. Most. Most, <laughs> most is edible. Here's the basic idea. We've got some hydrochloric acid, we have a pineapple, and we've got some Coca-Cola. We're going to submerge a large steak in each of these substances, let them sit over the weekend, and we're going to see which one has dissolved the steak the most. All right, guys, here is what we're thinking. You may have seen that you can use pineapple to tenderize meat. It may be partly because it's acidic, but mostly it's because pineapple contains an enzyme called bromelain, which breaks down the meat fibers and everything holding a steak or similar together. Uh, and we want to try pitting that, the pineapple, versus a couple other things that may have a bit of a reputation for being able to dissolve meat. So this is muriatic acid, also hydrochloric acid. It has the same basic ingredient as stomach acid. That's right. Muriatic acid is a diluted form of hydrochloric acid, and that's basically what we've got going on in our stomach to dissolve food. I'm pretty sure that even this diluted form is stronger than what we have in our stomach. Just a bit. <laughs> but either way, um, it's, it's an acid and it's dissolving food sometimes in our stomach. So yep. we want to see what it does concentrated. Just a steak in a container full of hydrochloric acid. What's it going to do? And Coca-Cola. We have Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, of course, has urban myths and legends and old wives tales about how bad Coke is for you and whether it can dissolve you from the inside. And I think that there's been plenty of, uh, what, decades bordering on centuries of testing at this point that while it may not be great for you, it's also not just going to dissolve you. But we're going to do a more concentrated test and once again, submerge a steak in Coca-Cola, let it run over the weekend and see what it does. I don't think we can just put the pineapple on the steak directly. We want to get that bromelain out into the open. So we're going to blend our pineapple up, uh, cut the tops off. But I've recently learned that even the rind of a pineapple is supposed to have some of this enzyme in it. So we're going to just cut the top off and then cut our pineapple into probably quarters and run it into a blender and turn it into pulp. We have a strong enough blender, it should work just fine. <laughs> There we go. Nice. All right, pineapple slurry. That looks, <laughs> actually that looks like spicy mustard, but it's not, not even close. Let's get some of that in there. Take our steak, that is quite a steak. Wow, yeah. Make sure there's some under it, and then we're just gonna cover it up. Make sure there's lots of it. Okay, that is one well covered. Next up, we're gonna take this steak here, gonna fit into this glass container. Watch it slump a little bit like that. And then we're going to fill Coca-Cola until it's well past the height of the steak. We want to make sure that there's plenty in here. This one we are going to coat a muriatic acid. It's giving off fumes almost immediately. That steak is already very discolored. That should keep too many fumes from getting out, but if there's any sort of pressure, it's not gonna hold it in, it's foil. All right, now we're gonna find places to keep these <laughs> over the weekend. Wow, it's been a weekend. My goodness, these are disgusting this, looking. <laughs> this looks vile. Um, okay, so again, Coca-Cola, blended pineapple, muriatic acid. And I do want to address what's happened to our muriatic acid container over the weekend. We got back into the studio and the fumes themselves ate through the aluminum. It's pretty impressive. Well, let's see if we can take oh, them boy. out. Ooh, that pineapple smells good. There's a chance that it's dissolved so much that we won't get a cohesive steak, but we'll try okay. and we can rinse them off, set them out to dry here. So I'm actually just going to pour out all of this sludge into the sink and then see what the steak looks like as well. I'm gonna start mixing up some baking soda to try and attempt to get our steak out of the muriatic acid here. <laughs> Trying to get all that Coca-Cola residue off of the meat. This does feel really, really soft. Like I'm trying to hold it together right now, but in a minute we'll do a test to see how easily it comes apart. Tongs not very compatible with that jar. Oh no! Well, that looks like about the consistency of roast beef. All right, here's our steak from the pineapple sludge. Oh boy. 
I'm trying to pour off the acid, but quite a bit of the steak is coming with it too. Uh, while I'm rinsing this pineapple off, like some of the fat cap is just rubbing oh, away in my fingers. Sure is. Pieces of steak may decide to be a part of this experiment. So about the steak and the muriatic acid. You know what's weird about it is it looks cooked. Like the color of it is cooked meat. It doesn't look raw. So if you look at the one that was in the acid, like gently running water was tearing this apart. This has the consistency of something that's been cooking in a slow cooker for two days, which is far too long for a roast. Or steak that was in your stomach for two days. Probably. So you know, normally with a roast beef, like you can tear it this direction fairly easily, but this stuff you can tear this direction almost as easily. So I think we have a clear winner as to which one dissolves the steak the most. Absolutely. Very obviously the acid did that. Mm -hmm. But now we have our pineapple, which has got the bromelain enzyme as a tenderizer. Yep. And we have Coca-Cola. Which one do you think is softer? I've handled both of them gently and they both seem very soft. Just because I've seen what the bromelain will do, I think that our pineapple steak is going to be softer, but I don't know. I haven't handled the, the Coca-Cola one at all. I'm gonna take this dinner knife, not sharp at all, and I'm going to see if I can just cut right down through our pineapple steak here. Go for it. Well, it's got some okay. resistance. Okay, there's some texture still there. It's not slicing through, at least not after the first like quarter inch. I am still able to cut it with it, the knife. It is still a steak though, like there's yeah. still there's some. The inside still looks like, actually looks like a pretty good steak too. Yeah. All right, similar test on the Coca-Cola. Cool, it's, it's squishy about the same. Okay. Again, that looks like a pretty good steak on the inside. Sure enough. I think we need to cook these. Throw some salt on them, get some, uh, some hot oil in a pan, and fry them up a little bit and see what kind of result we get. I gotta say, just by like poking it, these feel just incredibly tender. They do not look like a good steak. Like, even just when I flipped it over, I was like, normally there's like a nice brown. Yeah. This was like- These are leached. Gray and black and white. That is still... That's raw. Oh, that's still cold on the inside. That's... We're just gonna cut several slices off, <laughs> finish those up in the frying pan, and then we'll try them. Well, now at least we have something that looks pretty delicious. Let's see what the inside of this is looking like now. There we go, a little bit of pink still. Steak tenderized by pulverized blended pineapple for 72 hours, then cooked in oil on the stove. Mmm, extraordinarily tender, very little flavor. That is the tenderness level of an expensive filet mignon. Super easy to chew through. Yeah, that sort of fell apart in my mouth. However, the first flavor that hit me was sour. Hmm, <laughs> I might not have rinsed off all the pineapple. For me, the flavor is like roast beef, maybe like mediocre roast beef and salt from the crust that we put on it. It's almost like, like it did fall apart in my mouth, but it almost felt almost like sandy. Cause like, cause it like becomes like little tiny grits almost. Hmm. And it's very interesting. But yeah, it like, you can like, you don't need your teeth for that. No. Mm -mm. So honestly, a filet mignon doesn't normally have a lot of fat in it and not a ton of the flavor comes through because of that. That's true. So I would say that's actually a decent, well, I didn't get any sour in mine, <laughs> but I would say what I had was a decent approximation of filet mignon, not a super strong beef flavor, but crazy tender, really yep. easy to chew. We blended the rind as well, so it's not like a mmm, springy, acidic, adds, it's more like mmm, plant. Yeah, that's like, my steak. that wasn't supposed to be there. That's weird. Let's try the Coca-Cola one. Think any of the flavor came through in this? We'll find out. That tasted like Coca-Cola right there. <laughs> Absolutely, definitely got some cola flavor in that bite. The texture, it's held together just a little bit, so there are like, the fibery texture that you want in steak that you expect, but mm -hmm. it's like a very, very soft steak. So it's, the texture is actually phenomenal. Like if you got this at a restaurant, this texture, you'd be thrilled. Yep, that's fantastic. It tastes like Coca-Cola. There's like no beef flavor coming through and there's Coca-Cola flavor coming through. And I don't like cola. So to me, that's not a good thing. All right, cameraman gets to try some. Pineapple. Pineapple. Okay, you have a good piece of steak. Yeah, that's crazy soft. Maybe too soft on that one. Like it really doesn't have any steak chew to it whatsoever. It's the old, I mean, though it kind of falls apart. I like the flavor. Yeah. It's so, not like that bad. Whereas this one, I really got a lot of Coke flavor in it, which to me isn't a good thing. I love Coke, so. Me too. Do you like it in your meat? 
It's definitely like sweeter. Yep, I actually really like the Coca-Cola one. I mean, if you were able to keep a little bit more flavor, maybe 24 hours instead of 72 hours, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. I'm shocked. So, muriatic acid dissolved. Like it was Gone. holding itself together in the container. We couldn't physically get it out of the container without it just shredding to bits. Pineapple versus Coke. Okay, so it sounds like you liked the Coca-Cola one a lot better. I do. Honestly, the texture for me when it comes to steak is a lot to do with it. The texture on our pineapple steak is really throwing me off. Mm. Just because of how easily it falls apart. It like It is really, really soft and has no very little fiber holding it. I think the pineapple also stripped more flavor. I was thinking mm -hmm. the Coke did it first. I've changed my mind. The pineapple pulled more flavor out. Mm -hmm. And the Coke pulled a lot of flavor out, but even though I don't really like the Coke flavor, it's a flavor. And, and so the pineapple is just like bland with salt. The cola is like bland cola with salt, but like a little bit of the beef flavor mm -hmm. still. Would you recommend that somebody do this with their steak? If they have bad teeth and love Coca-Cola, then sure, I guess. I think if you added something else, maybe honestly this might sound strange, but if you added a little bit of like garlic to your Coke and then marinated it in that, I think it would actually garlic, be Garlic, salt, and pepper in with the Coca-Cola. Yes. Marinate it like that. Yep. Maybe you could get something good. Maybe not for 72 hours, guys. That was good. <laughs> Cameraman Nate. <laughs> Guys, that's it for today, but you know we always have more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.